Well, Ian, it's all quiet here at the moment, but of course it will be very different come Wednesday night when Hampden Park will be heaving. A crowd of 64,000 roaring, they hope, Scotland to that one elusive point which will confirm qualification. Qualification, incidentally, which would come at the expense of the 1986 World Cup semi-finalists, France. When Scotland led at half-time in Yugoslavia in September, a goal from Gordon Dury, it looked as though they would be spared their present anxieties. Three goals in seven minutes early in the second half changed that happy scenario drastically and dramatically. The disappointment heightened by two self-inflicted wounds, two own goals. But losing away to the team which tops Group 5, in itself no disgrace. Nor on paper was losing in France when the one necessary point was available again last month. But in practice, there was cause for concern. This is the third goal in a 3-0 defeat. A cause for panic then? Not according to manager Andy Roxburgh. When we began the campaign, very few of the critics gave us any chance of qualification. Even from my own point of view, I had watched Yugoslavia and France playing and they had an abundance of good players. And to be honest, I wondered at that time whether we would be good enough to make it. Now, we worked very, very hard to get ourselves into a good situation, which we were at the summer. And now we go into the last match with a great chance of qualifying. So I think if everybody takes it into perspective and realises what we have done, that we've given ourselves this great opportunity, then we should be happy about it. Anything but pessimistic. So you're keeping calm, but do you get a feeling around the place that the fans might just be getting a bit edgy about it? No, I don't think edgy is the word. I think the Scottish people, we love a drama. You know, we just love that. You know, anything that involves the, an excitement and, uh, of such an occasion. And that's what they're going to get at Hamden. And this is the reason why the tickets went immediately. Uh, it may be live on television, but most of our people want to be there. And uh, yes, they're going to have a drama because it's going to be a black-white situation. Tottenham goalkeeper Eric Tordsvet is the most familiar face in a Norway side determined to give a good account of itself at Hamden. But a more direct danger is Jan Arga Fjortoft, who scored against Scotland in Oslo and who's been tracked by Queen's Park Rangers. Fjortoft has mixed feelings about Wednesday night. From I was a little kid, I've always been interested in uh, British football, and I think I hope Scotland go to the to the um, to, to Italy. But I will be more glad to, to be match winner at Wednesday. Well, Fjortoff obviously has his qualities. Is there anything else about Norway, Andy, that gives you some cause for concern? Well, someone like Brat Seth, I think, is an outstanding player, and he's very, very dangerous on set plays. I mean, he scored the late equaliser against France in the match, World Cup match in Oslo. And uh, he's got real quality about him. Scotland's quality is reflected in their regular appearances in World Cup finals. David Cooper's penalty against Wales made sure of their place last time in Mexico. And the recall of the 33-year-old former Rangers winger, now with Motherwell, is the one surprise in this squad. Cooper could be the man to make the chances for Morris Johnston. For Andy Roxburgh, though, it's a match which has only two outcomes. He'll either be hero or villain. Well, that's, uh, that's football. I mean, my own view of it is that it's a football match and you have to keep it into perspective that uh, don't get too high when you win and don't get too low when you lose. And that's exactly the view I have of it. When I took the thing on, I always said to myself, well, you're better to try and fail than not to try at all. And uh, we're prepared to go ahead and do the very best we can for Scotland. People know that we've worked diligently, enthusiastically, and we'll continue to do that. And therefore, I have no qualms about it. What I, I know is that after Wednesday night, win, lose, or draw, that I'll know I've done my very best on behalf of the players and on behalf of the team. And if it's good enough, well, good. I'm personally looking forward to Wednesday night because, in fact, in some ways I'm disappointed that I'm going as a manager. I would love to go as a spectator, as I've done in the past, and um, because then I could be as emotional as the rest and get carried away. But uh, I can't afford to do that, obviously. From my point of view, I have to remain calm and collected. And um, if we win, then I might smile at the end. So Andy Roxburgh keeping his emotions well and truly under control. But Saint, with so much at stake for Scotland here on Wednesday, 
I wonder if you're going to be able to do the same. Ooh. Martin, Martin, I shall be there, son. Oh. Live on television in Scotland, I'll be there and I'll be hey, smiling. Jim. That was a big if from Andy <laughs> Roxburgh there, wasn't it? What? Do I detect some doubts in Chili Jocko Land, son? <laughs> None oh. at all, son. We're very, very confident. Are you sure? Because yes. I'll tell you what, you'll not get past Eric the Viking, you know. He's playing <laughs> remarkably well at uh, he, this present. Here's time. a bit of action from he Eric is. the Viking coming this, this, up. Eric the Viking at his very best here. As you can see, he's covered the goal brilliantly. <laughs> And, um, yes, and that's what you'll need on Wednesday, Sane. <laughs> that is to give our boys a little bit of confidence. <laughs> no little need it, yeah. But we have our own keeper, Jim Layton. Yes, the great Jim Layton, who's never put a foot wrong, as we all know. And here you can see him in marvellous form, covering the near post quite brilliantly. And, oh, my good God. Well, there you go. It's a battle of the giants on Wednesday. <laughs> Now that that but, was a bit naughty to have that slipped in. That was, but there you go. But what I was saying is that Martin was saying there could be some very heavy heaving at Hampden <laughs> Park <laughs> on Wednesday, <laughs> and there could be, there could be heaving all over the place. Well, I'm I'm pretty confident, and uh, with David Cooper maybe in the team, it's been a lucky mascot for Andy. Well, Rockman. good luck to Chile Jocko Land. That's